Hello, this is Dom from Black Tag Studios and welcome to another Retro Codex review. Uh, in this series we go through codexes of the past, some of which I've owned, some of which I haven't. And today we are looking at the second edition Imperial Guard Codex. So Imperial Guard before they became the Astra Militarum. Um, and yep, I, uh, I once owned this codex back in the day. So I've got some very fond memories of it, but let's go through a little bit of what we have here. So, so it's a second edition Imperial Guard Codex. Uh, this codex has 112 pages, um, so close to the 8th edition codex, which is 144 pages. Um, and we open it up here, we've got some classic heavy metal kind of artwork going on here, nice little dioramas. A bit different to the one we saw with the Sisters of Battle Codex. There's a little bit more action in this one here. Um, we look back at the cover and you can see it's very um, of its age. Very kind of like going, going from uh, action heroes. I believe the cover was by uh, David uh, Gallagher. And uh, yeah, very kind of proper Imperial Guard. That's what they're all about. Big muscles, big guns. Um, and some tanks in the background. So as we go through, we can, I forgot the inside, inside page here. Uh, it is done by Rick Priestley uh, with help from uh, Andy Chambers, Jervis Johnson and Ian Pickstock. Uh, we've got artwork from, of course, John Blanche, Wayne England, Mark Gibbons and Des Haley. Hanley, sorry. Uh, we then go into the contents page here and uh, you can see there's a lot of stuff in this codex compared to previous ones. Uh, we have got a lot in here. So let's get started, shall we? Oh, classic bit of artwork down there first. Um, as you uh, all know, if you've watched a few of these now, I do love some artwork here. Um, yeah, very Predators-esque with uh, a Katachan guy there. I think that's Mark Gibbons. So you open it up here. Another brilliant bit of artwork there. I believe that's probably going to be John Blanche there. Um, I keep saying it in these uh, these reviews, but I'd love to get a copy of this. And here we see some Valhallen troops here being led into battle. And in the background, you can see the, the different tanks here, artillery pieces. We move forward, we've got some Attilans there. Um, probably Attilans here as well, and Valhallen's there. Um, Attilans, yep, we're going to go into them a little bit today. Because, uh, of course, in the more recent codexes, uh, Attilans have disappeared, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so... Let's go through here. And here we've got a little bit of uh, information about the Imperial Guard. Now a lot of this remains true to the current law. So there's nothing really to delve into too much here. Um, once again we've got some nice bits of artwork here um, with the old school Cadians. Um, so as we know now they have changed in appearance somewhat. Kind of a lot of it remains the same but some bits have changed. Uh, down the bottom right we've got a mechanised uh, Katachan jungle fighter there. And we go through once and they're, they're kind of giving a bit of space for each regiment here. So unlike the current Imperial Guard Codex, I'm not going to uh, badmouth it too much, but you've got lots of different regiments in here. So on the top left over there, we have got the Talan, then we've got a little rattling down here, and a Commissar in the bottom right. So as it goes through, it gives a bit of space um, for each of the regiments here. Uh, and a bit of history on each planet as well. So it kind of delves into a particular conflict on a lot of these planets. Um, and it, yeah, a little bit more information that you kind of miss out a lot on the others. Um, so we've got uh, Katachan here, Cadia. Of course, at this point, Cadia still stands. Um, no spoilers for the future. Um, we've got Valhalla there. So in the Valhalla one, we've got a bit about the conflict with the orcs. Um, which is always a good read here. So they're, they're almost pitted against a particular foe um, rather than necessarily repeating the same one. Uh, here we've got the Mordian as well. So a little bit on the Iron Guard. This, this artwork is basically stuff from my youth. I used to try and mimic these pictures. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, so um, from... Um, Mordian there, it was, I believe it was a conflict with demons, kind of get pushed back further and further. A lot of stuff of um, Mordia, how it's kind of portrayed as a very sunless planet in a lot of ways. It's quite grim. Uh, and of course the uh, uh, Mordian Iron Guard there are pretty uh, like the opposite. So they've got to have some resolve. 
Uh, I've got the Tal on there. So we've got something about the Iron Warriors there back in the heresy. Um, and then we go through to the Elder. Um, some really interesting stuff in these books, actually. If you ever get a chance, please pick one up and give it a read. And you'll normally find them on eBay uh, quite cheap. This, of, uh, this one was donated um, by a good friend of mine, uh, Carl. Um, you might see his name pop up now and again. Uh, he gave me a lot of the old codexes. Um, next, we have the Attilans. So the Attilian, Attilans uh, are from, uh, uh, well, they're the Rough Riders originally. Uh, the only models they ever had were Rough Riders. And uh, I've got a bit of character here. Uh, born in the saddle, uh, a lot like the uh, white scars, uh, and unfortunately have kind of disappeared over the years. So that's a real shame. Um, I really had hoped that Attila would uh, kind of have some stuff coming out for him, but no, they seem to have been scrubbed from uh, history. And then we start getting into some of the units here. Some units uh, are going to be very familiar. Uh, some obviously you're going to be missing, um, but of course you've got the guardsmen in the top left here. Uh, and then we have the Rough Riders in the bottom left um, with their war horses there. Of course, I've got a, a stat line for the war horse. Um, why wouldn't you? Uh, then you have the Rattling Snipers. Very cool models. Um, I used to really love the old ones. Um, the new ones, uh, they're, quite, they're quite nice, but I think the old ones had a lot of character in them. Uh, Ogrins there. So Ogrins in second edition obviously appeared in the Orc Codex as well but uh, mainly known for their role within the uh, Imperial Guard. Uh, commissars. So the Commissars packed a bit more of a punch back then with a strength four uh, and a weapon skill of five. Um, they were definitely uh, something to be worried about. Uh, at this point here is just the one Commissar rather than a whole different cadre of Commissars. They've been in the uh, 40k universe since Rogue Trader. Uh, down here then we've got the Psychers. Psychers have changed a little bit as well. So we now see we've got a, like uh, weird psychers, and here we've got like psycho lords, psycho master, psycho champions. There's, there's all sorts going on there. Then we move over to the Imperial Guard stormtroopers. Now, if you look at the top right here, and bring this down, um, we can see there that that was the original look for stormtroopers, or um, as we would find out later, they the uh, Tempesta Scions. But that was a stormtrooper. Uh, stat line not as impressive as the um, the uh, the current ones, um, unfortunately. Whoops. Uh, and then we have the Imperial Guard mortar. Um, now, for me, I used to love these weapons because you'd be guessing the range. Um, between 12 and 60 on the mortar, so you, you don't have guessing anymore. Why not, I wonder? But uh, guessing used to be a lot of fun. You used to be able to like, look at the board and go, right, that's 24, that's 48, and kind of go, right, that, that's where I want to be putting it. So between there and there, a rough educated guess. And you'd got quite good at it, in my opinion. Um, unfortunately, that's no longer in the game. Maybe they should bring that back. Um, then we go on to the likes of the heavy mortar. So, of course, you had the Griffin uh mortar vehicle uh you don't have that anymore you can still get it on uh, forge world uh, forge world do a version and uh, the rules are in uh, battle scribe or on forge world um, so you can go check those out as well um got different types of uh, shell type there it's quite cool got the inferno type um uh, the frag and the melter shells Ooh, tasty and as you can see down here uh, strength 8 for the male to shell, D10 damage, minus 4 modifier, armor penetration, D6, D10, plus 8. Now, they don't have enough of these random dice rolls, in my opinion. They need to bring some of them back as well. Oh, to bring back some of these rules, it would be great fun and confuse people and extend game time significantly. Um, all right, so then we've got the Hellhound gun there as well for the, uh, the Inferno cannon. So back in second edition, there was only the one type of Hellhound. And uh, it was a beast. I've actually got one uh, sitting around waiting for some work to be done on it. And it's pretty heavy. Um, and then you've got the Earthshaker artillery gun. So we all know the Earthshaker. Uh, moving through, we've got the Needle Sniper Rifle and the Ogryn Ripper Gun. Now, the Needle Sniper Rifle there, uh, clearly uh, not really that, that good a rifle without a stock. Uh, quite interesting. Looks more like a sawn-off shotgun kind of thing going on there. Artwork, though, in these, these, this is just brilliant. 
I absolutely love this, especially for the weapons there. Uh, I can't remember what book it was, but it used to be a book where you would have um, pages and pages of um, war gear weaponry uh, drawings. And I, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, right, so sorry, <laughs> digress slightly. Um, here we have um, a bit of a write up of the Chimera, the Griffin, the Basilisk, the Hellhound, and the Sentinel. So we'll turn back a little bit there. We've got the Lehman Rust and the Lehman Rust Demolisher there. So you are missing a few things here, obviously, that we're used to now on the, the current 40k landscape. Um, we don't see the likes of the Hydra or the Wyvern or the Death Strike, or different Hellhound variants. There's all sorts missing. Um, but this is what you used to have. There were some really nice models back in the day. And uh, you would you, it'd be an honour to see some of them on the field. Uh, we have a bit of a story here about um, Macarius. Um, you, I believe, I'm not sure here, he was actually the War Master. Um, after Horus, he was the, the only other one named War Master. Um, and then we've got Yarrick. So there's a few coloured pages in here. Generally, though, this book tends to be uh, black and white, as most second edition books are, but there is a little bit of coloured um, stuff in the centre. Oh, now on to the good stuff. Some of the old metal models. Now, in my opinion, these Katachan jungle fighters, uh, the old metal models, metal models, are so much better than the plastic set that's out at the moment. And if I was to do a proper Katachan force, I would definitely get some more of these. Um, then we have the Ice Warriors of Valhalla. Uh, until recently, they were still available on the web, web store. Uh, I don't believe they are anymore, unfortunately. And uh, I, yeah, I, back in the day with my Imperial Guard army, I used to have like a, a, a squad of each, almost. And yeah, that that was good fun. I uh, never really had the uh, the foresight to go. Oh, actually, maybe you should get more than one squad of Ice Warriors. But no, I had one squad of Ice Warriors, and you'd be able to pick up the odd, um, the odd one in a blister pack. So, for instance, you'd be able to pick up the Melter one because I believe the Flamer was in the box. Um, but you didn't get the melter. Uh, then we have the Mordian. As you see here, they're nice lordy um, blue and kind of red. Blue, red and a bit of gold on there as well. Very cool. Uh, I think there's a book called Iron Guard and it's really worth picking up. Actually, it's about the uh, Mordian. Then we have the Talan. And what can you say about them? They are pretty cool looking. Um, for those who've watched Battle Report, I have used the Talan um, Regiment um, rule before and uh, I quite, quite like it. Uh, back here, unfortunately, you didn't have the Regiment rules. It just all had different models and it was down to you to so whatever you wanted to do. Then we had the Cadian Shock Troops. So we all know who came out on top and of course it was the Cadian Troops um, getting plastic boxes upon plastic boxes. And the old metal models, I had them as well. I had a blue and silver kind of paint scheme for them. Uh, and it was quite cool. And back in the day as well, they looked very much like the uh, Starship Troopers um, that we all know and love. And then we have the Rattlings uh, taking positions um, here against some uh, snake bites, sneaking through the pass, getting ready to get shot. And of course, we have the uh, Rough Riders of Attila and some Ogrins. Now, as I said before, the Rough Riders, they, they were absolutely amazing. Um, if I remember my lore correctly about the, the uh, Attilan Rough Riders, they'd pretty much born in the saddle, die in the saddle, and very much not agree with uh, walking. Um, they'd always have to have a mount of some sort. And I remember thinking years ago, it would be very nice if I got myself uh, and made myself an Attilan tank regiment. and could try and do some stenciling of horses on the side of the Lehman Russes. Um, but that's just me. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Put a comment below if you think that was a good idea. Um, yes. um, then a nice centerpiece army here. So very different, diff very different, sorry, to the last one we had with the, we did Sisters of Battle. Um, this one, you've got a nice full range of models, several squads of each. Um, so you've got, um, let's have a look on the left down here. We've got Cadia. Then we've got Katachan, then we've got Mordia, uh, got some auxiliary troops here, a couple more, um, Ka Katachan, M Mordian, some Attilas, some tanks, some Rattlings, and of course, old Yarrick with the uh, power snippers. Snip, snip. Then we go on to the tanks. Now, I've still got a couple of these old tanks in my army, actually. Um, uh, in my Imperial Guard, I've got several of the old Russes. Um, back as well, you had the Demolisher, so the Demolisher is slightly different. Uh, the grill on the back of the Demolisher, it was, I think, slightly thicker than it was on the Lehman Russ. 
Uh, of course, you had a metal gun in there. You had the commander with his bolt pistol uh, and some really nice metal weapons on there as well. And yet the Lehman Russ uh, was complete plastic. Um, so it was a nice weight difference between the two. And then we have the Chimera and the Griffin. So the Chimera, obviously you still see today, um, it used to be the only dedicated transport for Imperial Guard. And um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was definitely a nice model to see. Um, probably at this time, um, I, was, uh, so I, was, I was quite young, youngish probably. <laughs> and uh, a lot of the people I was playing didn't really have that much of a coherent force. So you might see the odd Chimera here and there. Uh, Griffin as well, very cool, very cool. You see them on eBay occasionally, um, but yeah, unfortunately you don't see them that often. Then we've got alternative paint schemes. Ooh, ah. And um, we've got some different paint schemes here for Cadia, some for Mordia, and some for Valhalla there. And you kind of can pick what you want to do. Some of them are pretty gaudy. I'm not sure I'd definitely want to do any of these. Um, some are quite cool, quite like the uh, Valhalla one, they're very like Russian, uh, Soviet-esque. Uh, I'm not sure why this Kazachan guy's got purple and green uh, fatigues, it's interesting, but uh, you know, each to their own, can't judge them. Got some digital stuff going on on the left, um, yeah, interesting. Uh, once again you've got some Kazachan there, uh, then got some uh, Talana on the right there, and it just gives you, like, you could do different versions if you really wanted to. Um, I mean, these models, in my opinion, still kind of stand up a lot of ways. That's a very nice sculpt. And so we move on to how a regiment is organised. And it's something that you kind of take away from this book. There's a lot of thought and a lot of modern military and probably Second World War military kind of... Um, uh, organization goes into it because as we go through you'll see about um, barrages etc and you know we normally get that in the 41st millennium but there's definitely a lot of, a lot of inspiration from uh, modern day uh, military uh, um, procedure uh, and then we go on to some of the data sheets as we will call them um, or data cards sorry um, which are really cool if um, anyone remembers them you'd have like the, the the crew data up here so you'd go oh, how many people are on a uh, are in a hellhound and you go, oh, there's three of them. There's a driver and two gunners. And uh, yeah. And as you go through here, where you'd hit, what you'd do when you hit it, the armor value of that part of the tank. Um, it's almost a game in itself, I suppose. Uh, and then we have a nice space map. We all love a space map. And here you'd have a bit of information of where the regiments are, what particular are um, located. For instance, you've got a tiller down here uh, and the Ultima. Uh, so yeah, about Segmentorum. That was definitely a, a butchering of that word. Uh, Necromunda there, Catachan, now again. And yeah, yeah I, I love these maps. Because sometimes the maps in some of the codexes would um, leave off these parts so you could like cross reference the two and try and work out whereabouts your planet would be. And so we'll go through some more cards here. So once again, you'd go down to your local news agent, you'd photocopy them in, you'd print them off, or you can cut them out if you really, really wanted to. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that though. Um, Commissar Yarek, one of the older sculpts here. Um, very nice, nonetheless. A very ornate kind of storm bolter there with some sort of skeleton around it. Uh, good old banner and uh, power snippers. And yeah, they put a lot of love into these books. You can't just look look down here towards this battle here, and you can see them deploying some Valhalla troops. Uh, Yarek really taking top mark there, standing up, inspiring the troops as uh, the elder forces right race in to take them. Uh, we've got some war gear cards there. Once again, off to the news agent. We'll go down there and we'll photocopy them. Uh, weapons teams here. So this is quite interesting with the uh, Imperial Guard weapons teams. Um, there was a rule where you could leave the heavy weapon uh, in one location and then the rest of the squad could go off and uh, carry out whatever actions they had. So they wouldn't be forced to be dragging around this heavy bolter, for instance. You could pop up your heavy bolter behind a barricade and just sit there and uh, unleash hell, leaving the rest of your guardsmen to go off and uh, claim objectives. So yeah, it's something maybe that, that should definitely come back. Um, 
which, uh, yeah, definitely should. Uh, then you've got command squads here. So it goes on a bit about the command squads and yeah, using leaderships for brake tests, etc. Uh, and then, of course, you could have a Rough Rider command squad. Um, so it's essentially, you could almost have a complete um, mounted army in that aspect. Um, like I said, unfortunately, Tillens have kind of disappeared. Uh, you've got veteran abilities here. So your command team and your, uh, your veterans, you can pay extra points. And um, even here, look, for rattlings uh, and turn them into veterans with new abilities which uh, sometimes you need, especially if you're going to spend a lot of time kind of converting things here. Um, and then we go on to barrages and comlinks. So you could be able to put a barrage across the field and uh, hopefully uh, take out some enemies and uh, yeah, some comlinks as well, which is quite cool. Um, because as I said here, it takes a lot of um, inspiration from modern military tactics, um, but not not too far into the uh, imagination and then we go on to a little bit here about army lists game size etc and also another thing to mention is I'm a big fan of cavalry so the more cavalry we see on the battlefield the better um, and there we go so a bit of war gear there so war gear is not as uh, huge as we have seen in the past Commander details here, Commander HQ, uh, and then Command Squads. Uh, command Squads will be given a, a Lieutenant and a few Guardsmen, uh, and a Command HQ would be a Captain uh, or a, a Colonel, uh, and rough, ride stuff, rough Rider stuff there. Very nice bit of artwork down there actually, in the bottom right. And as we go through here, we once again we get come, come across the, the Commissar and the Psyker. We then go on to the battle line element of your army. So these would be the main troop choice, as it were. So we have Imperial Guard squads, um, which uh, they've got a nice bit there. So you've got a six up save and then a five up um, against uh, blast weapons. Of course, as we know, 9th edition is coming around and there will be blast weapons reintroduced. It'll be interesting to see if you could actually get a different save against blast weapons. But once again, I think that is probably, that age is gone. Uh, I think they like to simplify things in a lot of ways. Uh, we have a heavy weapon squad, Rough Rider squad, Ogrins, Rattling Snipers, Stormtroopers. So Stormtroopers obviously were in there as well. Uh, Lehman Russes, Demolishers. Um, and then we see the uh, vehicles we had earlier in the book. They're appearing here once again. Support, so who they could ally with. Space Marines, Imperial Agents, Eldar, and whatever this race is down here, squats. Hmm, um, essentially, yeah, they could ally with those races there. Um, there are some exceptions. Uh, for instance, the Eldar one, you may include troop choice, uh, Troops chosen from Elder Codex, with the exception of the Avatar. You may not include an Avatar as part of your Allied Force. Um, fair enough, I suppose. Uh, then we've got special characters. So we have Lord, Commander, Solar, uh, Macarius. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the story, uh, uh, in uh, Black Library, etc., about, um, about this guy. Uh, unfortunately, the, the model has come and gone, and we no longer see him in the Imperial Guard Codex. Uh, we have Yarrick. We all know Yarrick, he's still going. The old man is still plodding on. And uh, I personally love uh, Yarrick. Even this older model has something about it, but the uh, new model itself is brilliant. On well, the new model, the current model, sorry. Uh, Nork. Nork is obviously still in the uh, the Codex, the uh, Bodyguard Ogryn. Uh, Captain Arahim of Talan. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, he's, he's now gone as well. <laughs> This is where the regiments, a lot of them had their own character. Uh, we don't see that anymore, unfortunately. Um, we've, we have then got Captain Chenkov of Valhalla. Once again, he has gone as well, the way of the dodo. Um, I believe he was in sixth and maybe seventh, and he's just gone now in eighth. Uh, we've got Schaefer and the last chances. Uh, we then have Stumper, uh, Muckstart Rattling, Sharpshooter. I don't remember this guy whatsoever. It's almost like um, he's just been added to this codex to confuse me. Um, but yeah, he's very cool. He's like a marksman um, rattling. I was reading his rules. Um, essentially, you've got a shot 
uh, as an alternative to firing D3 times, so normally this guy can fire D3 times rather than just once, um, Stumper can go for one carefully placed shot, not only picking his man, but finding a chink in his armour or a vulnerable body, uh, part of his body. Shoot is normal, if the shot hits, the enemy save, uh, enemy, blah, 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 blah. enemy's armour save is reduced by a further D3. Yikes. We then have Captain Magol come here uh, and a Tillin character. So, yeah, unfortunately, as, as the rest of the Tillins have gone, he has gone as well, which is a shame because they did have some character. And it'll be really nice at some point in the future that they, they could bring these guys back somewhere to go with the Imperial Guard force. Because some of the sculpts now for the horses, like we've seen the Admet horses coming out. Um, and they look pretty good. So it'd be quite nice to see if uh, Rough Riders in the future get a bit of love. Um, we then go into Armoured Brutality, um, which goes into a little bit about warfare with uh, using your tanks. Um, they give you some tips uh, how to use them. And there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, you could just read through this stuff for ages. And some of it still stands out, uh, except for the rules. Uh, a lot of their, their thinking kind of, you know, still works. Um, we've got a sample list there of an army, like you, what some of you could aim towards. And then we've go back to the catalogue. Um, so as we saw previously in other codex reviews for second edition, some of the later ones do not have catalogues at the back. But this one, lucky enough, does have one. And this is where you'd be picking up your demolisher off your mate. And he would say, for instance, oh, I've lost a hatch lid there. And you can go on and you can order yourself a particular hatch lid using that, that code there. And that will show you the components you'd have if you ordered one from you. Or you just want another tank commander. There you go. And you then have other elements there you could order. The Griffin, the Lehman Russ and the Chimera were both plastic kits. Uh, this one obviously had a uh, Chimera chassis, um, but metal components there. A metal deck, some crew members and the actual gun. So, yeah. Uh, you go on to some of the over codexes, some of which we've seen, others we haven't. There's still a lot of to do for second edition for this series. And then we go on to some of the, uh, the metal models here. So on the left here, except for the lieutenant, this would be your, um, uh, you, the m basic guys you'd get in a box. Uh, actually, I take that back. You wouldn't get these guys. Um, you'd get the rest, but not them. There we go, and a Mordian as well. And these bring back some memories. Hopefully it does for you, for everyone watching this. If you if you remember this codex, you probably had fond memories of flicking through the pages and wishing for some of these models. Uh, I remember definitely writing the codes down. Uh, on the back of White Dwarf, you'd get like an order sheet and you'd be writing them down there frantically, hoping that someone would order something for you. Um, if you. If this was before your time, um, hopefully you find this interesting to see how Games Workshop has changed. Um, notable thing to notice uh, about this codex is there's no conversion uh, suggestions. So in, for instance, the Sisters of the Battle and the Chaos Codex, there's lots of conversion suggestions. Here is pretty much straight out the box. There you go. Which is quite interesting to note. And then we came on with the Talan, uh, Till and Rough Riders. And the Ogrins there. And we finish on the Rattlings. So like I said, I, had, uh, I think I probably had 10 Rattlings at one point, and they're, they're very cool models. And on the back inside page, uh, the Imperial Guard are going to war against the greedy Greenskins. And uh, this is quite a nice diorama. Uh, and, uh, you know, as you saw from some of the later ones, uh, they didn't put as much effort in, but they put some effort into this one here. Lots of Goblin Green bases going on there. Uh, very nice codex. So, I hope you've all enjoyed this review. I have definitely enjoyed going through this book again because it's something that I don't really get a chance to do. And uh, I think I'd like to share my passion with you guys. Um, we've got a couple more codexes to go before we move on to third edition. Um, but if there's any particular codex you'd like to see, let me know and I'll see if I can uh, find you a copy. Um, but this is Dom from Black Toad Studios. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I will see you soon.